Good morning. Jeremiah prayed for God's wrath to be turned away from them. What was the response? Our reading today is in verses 18 through 23. Then they said, Come and let us devise plans against Jeremiah, for the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come and let us attack him with the tongue, and let us not give heed to any of his words. Give heed to me, O Lord, and listen to the voice of those who contend with me. Shall evil be repaid for good? For they have dug a pit for my life. Remember that I stood before you to speak good for them, to turn away your wrath from them. Therefore, deliver up their children to the famine and pour out their blood by the force of the sword. Let their wives become widows and bereaved of their children. Let their men be put to death. Let their young men be slain by the sword in battle. Let a cry be heard from their houses when you bring a troop suddenly upon them. For they have dug a pit to take me and hidden snares for my feet. Yet, Lord, you know all their counsel, which is against me to slay me. Provide no atonement for their iniquity, nor blot out their sin from your sight, but let them be overthrown before you. Deal thus with them in the time of your anger. So we asked, what is the response? Well, the response of them is to seek Jeremiah's killing. They want to kill him. They want to murder him. This is the way evil is. It rejects any good done to it because it's all about self-service. Selflessness is the opposite of self-service. And these are just, you know, water and oil. They just simply don't, don't go together. So evil sees any initiative of mercy as an indicator of weakness. There really are no bridges we can build to evil. An appeal from good to an evil person fails because there's no answering cord on the other end. Usually our appeals are to the good that is in there, we hope, somewhere. But when we appeal to someone who's gone in holy evil, uh, there's no answering cord. So they see it as uh, a sign of their superiority, their cunning over your uh, stupidity, or your, or your being trapped in, in principles that are just wrong. And Jeremiah's prayer here is quite firm. He even prays for God not to blot out their sin, which would mean, you know, that ultimately they'd be lost. And you know, that might seem out of place. But again, remember that all real prayers, all true prayers are offered to God with a sense of, by the way, if this is your will. We may not even say it all the time, but, if, but that's where our heart is, isn't it? That when we pray to God, we're asking him to do things, but only to do things in accordance with his will, because we worship him because we, we love his righteousness. We're not asking him to bend his righteousness for us. And it's also true that all of our prayers are interpreted by him for us by the Holy Spirit. So when I pray to God, the Holy it goes through the interpretation of the Holy Spirit. So we anticipate that if there's anything wrong in our prayer, that the God of heaven, it'll go through his interpretation and he will, he will change that, refine that part of it, the spirit of it, as the prayer goes to him. Also remember that Jeremiah is a person under considerable duress. Under those kind of pressures, anyone might succumb to uh, the weakness of humanity and, and utter a prayer that, that really, after they think about it, they might not be in favor of. Jeremiah wouldn't be the first person to have human elements mingled in his requests to God. So again, their response to Jeremiah's goodness, praying for God's wrath to be assuaged, their response to that is, we want to kill this guy which suggests that God's goodness toward them through Jeremiah hasn't really found that, that answering chord that we, we would hope for. The goodness of God leads people to repentance, but God's goodness hasn't led Satan to repentance because Satan has committed the unpardonable sin. His persistent choices for self-indulgence have, have closed that door for him. That appreciation for goodness that he originally had because God gave it to him, that has been driven from his heart by his own choice. And there are people who can no longer respond to God's goodness. People who've made that decision have, have made decisions that, that mean they really will never be safe to save at this point. But thankfully, that's always God's call. It's never really our call. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, uh, we want to be right. We're sorry that Jeremiah felt so much hostility toward him. We're glad that you preserved the life of your servant, Jeremiah. Help us to be right, Lord. Help us to be right when we pray. Our prayers might not always really come the way that we would think about it and realize that, that it was best, completely best. Give us hearts that are forgiving. Give us hearts that are fair and merciful, hearts that are long-suffering and patient. But also, Lord, help us never to compromise with evil. We thank you for hearing this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. God be with you.